if this morning's guest and his two friends didn't have two dollars and seventy one cents in their pockets then we wouldn't have had a fifty year pictorial of Myrtle Beach who is he? you'll meet him coming up next on Carolina People Good morning. Welcome to Carolina People. This morning we're in the Design Center of the Stone Temple in the industrial park behind Myrtle Beach Lighting. We're focused on the Myrtle Beach area and we're visiting with its unofficial historian, Dr. Jack Thompson. Good morning, Jack. My pleasure. How Again. long? And that's Again. right. And now, how long have you been Dr. Jack Thompson? Oh, uh, I think. Um a year now. Uh, right at a year, that's right. Uh, the May celebration, graduation yeah, at Coastal yeah. Carolina, that's where exact. they... Um, they bestowed on you the honorary bestowed doctorate. Bestowed on me yeah. the honorary doctorate, uh, Master of the Arts. Isn't that amazing, Jack? Isn't it that is, amazing? It was really unbelievable. Oh, yeah. And, uh, I might tell you a cute story. Please, yeah. Um, on April 1st, I got a phone call at my studio and the caller identified himself as uh, Ron Engel and he said um, Mr. Thompson uh, the Board of Trustees would like to invite you to accept a doctorate at Coastal. Oh. I said now Ron I'm looking at the calendar and it's April 1st. Yeah. <laughs> I said is this April Fools? I said surely this is April Fool. He said no this is serious. And I said, well, it's a humbling uh, uh, acceptance, and thank right. you very much. And wow. by the way, I'll be there. Absolutely. And you accepted, and you were sitting up on the stage there, and there were some great quotes, and I think in all area papers covered that and had a good shot of you up there with some other folks. And you shared with the folks that day about the other guys that you traveled. Share with the viewers again about traveling down and what happened to them, and now eventually what happened to you. Oh my! It, you Wasn't know, that great? it's really, uh, it's really like a dream. Oh. It's just unbelievable that three little guys um, hanging around a pool hall in Greenville, talking to the older guys who had just come back from a place called Myrtle Beach <laughs> and no one knew where Myrtle Beach was Is that right? but it sounded so great the beach music the beautiful gals the dancing right. and the ocean and the, all of those things that go along with uh, what is today Myrtle Beach oh yeah sounded it just kind of blew our mind so we decided that we walked away and decided that we'd go down to Myrtle Beach and see what that was all about we counted our money, two dollars and seventy-one cents. Oh, come on! We found the highway, uh, two ninety-one out of Greenville. Went out on the highway, thought we'd be here in an hour. The only people traveling during the early fifties were farmers going a few miles uh -huh. down the road. Uh -huh. So uh, it took us two days to get here. We uh, we had we survived off of RC colas and moon pies. I was about to ask how at 271 could you make it? We traveled all over the state. Some people thought Myrtle Beach was down in around Charleston, <laughs> and so we we wound up down that way. And right. then finally somebody said, "No, I believe it's up toward Wilmington." Oh no! So we finally found our way into a little town called Society Hill. Uh -huh. And uh, finally, a, a benevolent uh, service station, gas station proprietor, put us on a bus and sent us on down to Myrtle Beach. And y'all were how old, Jay? Um, Twelve, thirteen. Oh, come on. Le uh, yes. Well, your parents must have been flipping out. Well, th they were. Yeah. yeah. Freddie Collins, Carol Campbell, and uh, Jack Thompson. Oh, come on. It was Fred Collins, Freddie to you then, obviously. Yeah. Carol Campbell, our then later governor. Yeah, governor. And Freddie became the uh, poker king. That's uh, right. Uh, the video poker magnet statewide and probably well beyond that. Wow. So... Uh, the rest of that story is that uh, we ran across the street and into the pavilion and I immediately saw the photo stand and ran over and asked if they needed help and uh, 
They said, when can you start? And I huh. said, right now if I could get a hamburger. <laughs> Carol and Freddie ran to the beach. Right. Carol uh, was able to get a job with a lifeguard as a beach monkey. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And the lifeguard would say, you see that float a mile down the beach? Go get it. It's overdue. Freddie lay down on the beach and went to sleep. No. Got severely sunburned. So we've got milkshake cups and went out around the jukebox and we bummed money from girls to get Freddie a bus ticket and we sent him back home. <laughs> a couple of days later, Carol's father came and picked him up and took him oh, home. Right. My parents sent my older brother to pick me up and uh, he met a girl. Oh. And those beautiful girls that came down just for the week and went home on Sunday, he met a local girl. Is that right? She wasn't going anywhere. Oh, wow, Jack. So he said, well, I'm not going home. And I said, well, if you're not, I'm not. <laughs> so anyway, the um, rest of that story is Freddie went home to become a multimillionaire. Right. And Carol went home to become the finest governor we've ever had. Mm -hmm. And uh, thanks to Coastal Carolina, uh, I'm now I'm a doctor. <laughs> so the three little fellows finally made Achieved, their mark. Achieved, that's right. Made made it all. Well, you've made your mark. Well, obviously, uh, Coastal wouldn't have even considered it had you not thoroughly made your mark ten times over prior to that to time. But the excitement back in '59 when, re when you were able to break off and open your own place with. Uh, Dwight Lamb's help there, and of course, y'all, you, uh, share with viewers a little bit about to what that was like. Uh, those between when you arrived in '59, how you were growing, really your business. Well, um, working for Dwight Lamb, mm -hmm. uh, Dwight Lamb actually became my guardian as well as my brother Joe. Is Thompson's that right? Right. Guardian, mm -hmm. so that we could work there in the studio. Uh, Myrtle Beach in the early 50s had a wonderful photographic studio really? um, called Skips. Mm -hmm. Mr. Lamb became our guardian, provided we would work there after school. Mm -hmm. And in working there, he immediately sent us both out around town photographing billboards and mm -hmm. hotels, motels. Uh, a lot of the motels, the only way they could advertise back in the early 50s was by postcards. Is that right? Huh. And uh, brochures. Right. And then, of course, everybody had to have a picture made if they were going to market a restaurant or a uh, guest house. Right, right. So we began to build a, an inventory of just about every every business, everything that was in business oh, yeah. had to have photographs. And at the same time, everyone that lived in Myrtle Beach that had to have a photograph right. came to Skips. Wow. We were the only photographic entity in Ori County. Mm, in the whole county, Jack. In the county. Wow. And in doing so, we did the annuals for Socasty, Conway, Wampee, uh, Myrtle Beach. For all the schools. All the schools yeah. during the 50s. And then again, uh, we photographed the Sun Fun Festivals, mm -hmm. anything of importance or historical, um, we, we were there to photograph it Lord. and uh, mm. maintain a tremendous inventory of all of those negatives. Mm. Mm. And I recall that uh, Mr. Lamb wouldn't let us go home at night until we wrote up the envelopes for all the negatives. Oh, come on, Jack. That so we you were shot. working all the time, yeah. So uh, when Mr. Lamb passed, um, his children have uh, bestowed on me the negative inventory mm. of Skip Studios, mm -hmm. uh, most of which uh, I created mm -hmm. sure. back in the 50s. Sure. So uh, I'm the proud custodian of those negatives, mm -hmm. uh, as well as the, the ones that I, when I opened my own studio in 1959, mm -hmm. again, I felt it very necessary to be at every chamber event, every ribbon cutting, groundbreaking, or social uh, in Myrtle Beach. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. was there, and I made all the pictures, and I have 
thanks to Dwight Lamb, taught me how to write up the envelope and put wow. the date and the name and how to file those negatives. What a powerful experience, Jack, to think about that and to imagine almost 50 years ago, did you ever imagine that 50 years later you'd still be doing it and you'd be doing as well, if not even better, the magic eye? No, I did not imagine that. And uh, by starting at such a young age, right. it became second nature. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There was really not a lot of effort. I just sort of cruised right through it mm -hmm. because I was, you know, when you're taking photographs, there's never a dull moment. <laughs> I guess there's not, because you're constantly looking and uh, looking for that great shot. And doing something different. Right. And there's always a different face, a different location, and we're all challenged to be our best and right. to do our best. Right. Someone asked me, uh, what is your best shot? And I said, I haven't shot it yet. The last one. Oh, I was about to say the last <laughs> one I just shot, because it's there. Yeah. Yeah, my best. and. Yeah. They, I'm my worst critic right. of the work I do because I'm still looking to do better work. I love it, Jack. Well, I got I got to tell viewers it was uh, more than almost four years now when my daughter was she was about nine months old that you snapped some great shots of the uh, two of us down at the pavilion at the Sun Fun Festival, I which you were kind that. enough and uh, gave me a great deal on that, getting the center shot and then three or four on the side of it. And it is above the fireplace in my house with a light that's on 24-7, literally. And it has been on for four years now on those uh, five shots you snapped of her. and They're tremendous shots. I'll never forget that day at the pavilion there. And when those, those, those were magic moments yeah. that were unrehearsed. Sun Fun 03. That's exactly right. Almost yeah. four years ago this yeah. June. Yeah. Magic moments not rehearsed. Obviously today is a little rehearsed because we're here. I'm about to hold up Memories of Myrtle Beach, a pictorial history of the Grand Strand through the eyes of Jack Thompson. You were kind enough to to um, do a hundred copies you did in leather and sold them. I know you're still selling these at Jack Thompson Photography .com, Jack Thompson Studios, and Jack Thompson Myrtle Beach .com. I saw you're selling those online. I think you've got some in area locations all over the place. I'm sure everyone would want to have them, but. Memories of Myrtle Beach, beautiful, uh, and we, I was blessed to get one of those hundred copies. And then, of course, in the sa at the same level, there, we've got a real opportunity. You brought some other great pieces in. I hope we can share with viewers some of those uh, great shots. Well, I thought your audience might like to see um, some of these photographs. Um, this is Myrtle Beach, and I must admit that I did not shoot this picture. Okay. But it's so uh, revealing of Myrtle Beach in 1944. Wow. And you might notice up here in, is the Methodist Church right, as right. a landmark. The center photograph is the Chapin Company. You'll see here. Right there, yes. Ninth Avenue, and again, the Methodist Church. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. What a wonderful, sleepy little town, Myrtle 1944. Beach. 1944. 1944. That's fascinating. That is a great shot. That is a great shot. Here's a great shot. I know there's no real order to how we've got those, but uh, a tremendous shot there. This is a photograph, to me, is Myrtle Beach when the Indians uh, roamed the Grand Strand. This is Myrtle Beach before. It was uh, civilized. Mm -hmm. It's a wonderful picture, and uh, considering this for the cover of another book that I is I'm that right? Another book, Jack. Another book wow. coming along on the on the history and beginning of Myrtle Beach. Is that right? That's tremendous. 